Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I'm gonna take you for a super cool, quick tutorial on how to create this 3D rotating uh, GIF logo that you can use. You can take them from the internet, anywhere, and you can use it for things like Spark AR, um, Instagram stickers, and also for the website Giphy, they have a lot of stuff on there. I'm just gonna show you how to do that really quickly in After Effects and Photoshop. And it shouldn't take you no longer than 10, 15 minutes unless you want to go in further depth and make it look a bit more, you know, razzle-dazzle. But apart from that, the effect's super cool and really easy to do. Let's get into it. Woo! So first, what we're going to do, we're going to put in our logo into Illustrator. Once we've got it in Illustrator, what we want to do is click it. And what we want to come over to Image Trace, click that. Uh, default will work if it's a black and white logo, or you can use one of these settings. If not, just play about. And then once it's done its magic, you should then click expand. And then if you click A on the keyboard and then tap the white and then push delete backspace. Now you've got yourself a logo, which has been outlined perfect. Um, and it's ready now for After Effects. So now what we want to do is basically save, save as and save your logo as what you need to name it as you want in your directory. I've already done it. So then I'll move on to After Effects now. What you want to do is drag in your AI file into the comp, into the project. And then what we want to do is simply drag it onto this comp set setting and it will create a new comp for you. Now, once we're in the comp, what we want to do is create it into a 3D object. So first let's right click, click create, and then create shapes from vector layer. Once that's done, now what you want to do is change this to a 3D layer by clicking this button here. This creates it into a 3D. Now we got the options to create the depth which we want for a 3D object. So we want to use extrusion depth. Let's change this to about 30. And now once that's changed, you can see it's already bringing it out a little bit. So maybe I'll bring it to 50, just so we've got some more work to work with. Perfect. Now what we want to do is create some color on this effect. So I want this to be kind of, I'm gonna go for a dark red. So now what we got that, now it looks very flat. So what we want to do there is to make a light. So if you right click, new, light, it'll create a spotlight for you. You want to cast shadows and you can change the intensity in the cone angle and cone feather to your please uh, to please you. So just, you know, work with what you've got to do. Um, and now, as you can see, it has created the, <clears throat> the, the depth and the shadow that you need. So as I see, there you go, you've got this sign. And then if we click R on the keyboard, we can now rotate the 3D object. And I want to uh, keyframe or animate our, our GIF. So what we want to do is we're gonna use the Y rotation on the axis and we'll set that to zero and create a keyframe by clicking the stopwatch and then go ahead a second and then do, if you want one full rotation, just click the zero on the left hand side, click one. And what that will have done is create one loop. As you can see, like so. Now, if we want to add a little bit more to the logo because the lighting isn't 100% perfect, you can also create an environment uh, map, which will, it's basically like a HDR, uh, HDRI. Uh, I'm going to use this. I'm going to download that, download it for free. So now I'm going to add it to my project, add it in, and then add it into the composition. And now what we want to do is right click and click environment layer. So now what that has done, it's created a, a nice environment for the lights to bounce off for your image. A better lighting is we want to go drop into our settings and we want to go down to the material options. And if we go to reflection intensity, if we drag this one up or bring it up, you can start to see that it will create um, a bit more of intense reflections on your shape. So we want to bring it down a little bit, bring it down a bit more and you just bring it to where you think's good. And you can also play around with these other settings like the specular shininess. Um, and you just keep having to play around to what you think is good um, 
and yeah, it's all up to you really. Uh, I'm not going to delve too, too deep into it, but you get what's going there. Just play around the settings and see what's good for you. So now once we've got our animation, what we want to do is create the uh, export. So if we click N on the keyboard to the end of our keyframe, um, and just make sure that's on the last keyframe so that when we export it, we want it to loop. But what we haven't done yet is check where the middle point is for my logo, because I think when mine turns, it comes off the screen, yeah. So what I want to do is just scale it down um, 80%. Maybe do 75 just to be safe. So now it fits the borders. So that's what you want to watch out for as well. If it's rotating, obviously it's going to be some corner points that are going to extend out. So now if we add this to our render queue, like so. And now to create a transparent background, what we need to do is create an alpha. So if we go into our settings, What we want to do is you can use any of the settings I choose to tell you here. So there's an open EXR, which is a higher quality um, format or a PNG sequence or QuickTime. Um, just for, if it's for stuff like GIFs and stuff, QuickTime will be perfect. And then what we want to do is go to video output and put RGB and alpha. Now, once that's done, all we need to do is turn off the audio because we're not going to be using audio unless you are using audio, but I'm not. And then, Okay, and then obviously we can go into here and check the settings are good here. Make sure your comp settings are the same as the what you've made it. So 30 frames is what I've done. And then what you wanna do is export it. So export it to wherever you need to export it. And then we'll do the next step. It is simply drag in your exported MOV into Photoshop and wait for that to load. Now that it's loaded, you'll have a timeline below. Uh, it will automatically recognize it as a, mo a movie. And now what we can do is do our, we can do our little last effects. If there's some Photoshop effects that necessarily, you can't necessarily do in After Effects, then you can literally apply them onto your video effect now. So for say we wanna, say we didn't like the coloring here. Well, I'm gonna put a gradient map on and I'm going to add on this, cause this looks quite funky. So I'll add that on and also could add in some other things like curves. So I want to just bring in the uh, colors a little bit. I want to bring out some of that blue, I want more blue in it. Cool. And now what I'm going to do is add one more last effect onto here. So I'm just going to add a noise just to give it that, uh, just a little nicer touch to it. This looks nice. Um, you know, play around what you want. Push OK. And now if you scroll on here, as you can see, much more interesting. And that's simply we've just added a few layers. That's all we have to do. And now simply all we need to do now is actually export our track. So to export our track, all we need to do is go to file, export, save for web. And now what we want to do is change this to a GIF. And then if you come down to here, you can, you've got looping options. So you can have once or forever. Obviously you want it forever because we've got it looping. And if you push play, you can see it play back for you. And there you go, that's how you do it. And then all you have to do, if we pause that, we click save. Obviously here you can change in more settings, but I want to keep it the same as it is. Uh, also, if, if, it tends to, if it tends to be too big, the size, you can just bring down the image size or you can change the percent. So if we put it to 75, it brings it down to, you know, like whatever. And that will bring down the size also. You'll see the size down here. So that's 800 kilobytes. So that's brought it down to 500. So you can do that if, you, if your file is too big and then just click save and that's it exported. So now if we go into our folder, we should have a looping GIF and it only takes about 15 minutes if you're just rushing and need a quick little uh, export. So it's easy and you can put more time into it if you want more detail and better lighting, etc.